Today we go to a little bit more philosophical conversation. And this is something that I've been reading about on the entire idea of trying to find logic in this entire universe. And how does it make sense to an ecosystem? What does it mean to you as an ecosystem designer or an economist in this space? So the truth is, as much as we want to figure out logic and algorithms or understand how things work, understand correlation and causation to what is going on in the market or what goes on in supply and demand, which is what economists do, the truth is that a lot of things in the universe, in nature, is always one step ahead of logic. So you can't exactly logic your way out to figure out which plants will start growing or to figure out which leaves will start propping up first in this plant. So that's something that is a little bit out of scope of what we can do as an economist, as a designer, as an ecosystem creator. So this is something to be mindful about. And these are different kinds of risks that you don't always capture in the ecosystems that you design. This can be good and bad. The good thing is that your ecosystem is dynamic enough to be able to integrate new information and update its mechanisms or its market structure to allow for your ecosystem to continue growing. So for example, if you're in DeFi, this means that you have more information, more updates to make your ecosystem a bit more robust. Or if you're in a P2E space, then you have different kind of players, you have different kind of perspective to consider and to build as you are designing a very fun game. Of course, the downside to it is that it's this thing called Black Swan Events or Black Swan Effects, where there are a lot of uncertain unknown unknowns that you just don't know is going to happen because there is no algorithm or there isn't always a logical explanation to whatever that goes on in the space. So what does, what does that mean? And something that I was reading in a book, it talks about this quote from this guy called Luther Burbank and it reads like this. The fact is that you cannot see all of the facts about anything just by looking at the thing itself. To learn part of the essential truth about grasses, for instance, you have to study the cow. A fact is relative, and if it is placed out of its relative position, it apparently is not a fact, often. And this is a very important point that I read and I wanted to make a video out of it because as much as we are designing an ecosystem, we're designing a token, we want to anticipate a little bit more about what the token price fluctuation is. It is really relative to the entire ecosystem we're talking about. So if your ecosystem's business model doesn't make sense, or your ecosystem simply is quite flawed, then your token relative to the ecosystem just doesn't make sense. So when we want to compare tokens, we have to compare not just across the various kind of alternatives across the entire crypto segment if you want to, but also its relative position to the business model itself. The other thing in this relativity is that there is a big shift in economics when it comes to relativity. In the past, it's a little bit more one-sided, as in Shell or BP or one of these oil and gas companies, they find oil, they dig them out, they refine them, and they sell it to manufacturers. And there is some understanding of supply demand, but its supply creation or it's the finding of oil is not really directly dependent on the demand of people wanting the oil, because there are a lot of alternatives. What we're looking at today is a shift in that mindset and you can look at the top 20 companies by market cap in the last 15 years, most of them are moving away from independent creation of supply and demand, like oil and gas companies, like mineral companies, or car companies like GM, and moving towards ecosystem and markets creation. The difference is that when it comes to markets, the economics is so different. The economics is really a relative consideration, a relative correlation between two ecosystems or two parties in your market. It changes a lot on how we understand and analyze economics and how do we design economics in these systems. So firstly, there are a lot of things that we can design and there are a lot of things that we can try to limit this external risks, this black swan events. But the truth is that life is always one step ahead of logic. So we can't always logic our way out to everything. However, given that, we can have some level of price flow or assumptions flow where given the assumptions that we have in place, what are some less wrong guesses that we can make about this system and how can we create economic models and economic policies to constrain these less wrong decisions and less wrong outcomes. The way we do that is through understanding its relative relationship between these different agents or these different assets or these different tokens in your game. This could be for P2E, this could be for DeFi, this could be for social tokens, this could be for anything. 
This doesn't even have to be blockchain. It can be how Airbnb works, how Amazon works, how Facebook works on Meta now. What we're doing is really creating a market, creating this ecosystem that allows people to come and trade together and transact together. The economics of this has changed quite a bit and that's everything that we've been talking about. It is true that we can have a lot more control of how we design these economic policies, but also be mindful that there are a lot of things that is outside of our control, that is outside of things that we can design as policies. We call them black zone events, we call them external risks, but they exist. And this is something to be mindful of when you are looking into any ecosystem. Hope that helps and hope that gives you more information. Until then, I'll see you next time. Bye.